we're delighted to welcome Professor Wendy Powers, Principal of University College at Durham University, for an interview to celebrate International Women's Day as part of Euston of Meets series. Um, so the theme for International Women's Day this year is Women in Leadership, Achieving an Equal Future in a COVID-19 World, with the tagline Choose to Challenge. Um, we're pleased to welcome Professor Wendy Powers to speak about her experiences and career today. Thank you so much for talking with us today as part of your activities for International Women's Day. Um, so could you just begin by telling us a little bit more about yourself um, and your career to date? Sure. Well, thank you, Arabella. I'm honored to be uh, among the women being interviewed. It's quite an honor. Um, so sure, I'm happy to talk a little bit about my career. I have um, worked in higher education in um, the co-curricular sphere of higher education for about 30 years now. Um, that means that I have worked in a variety of roles outside of the classroom. Um, I started out as an undergraduate student working in a role that would be similar to what um, we call here a resident warden, uh, working in a hall of residence and learning about um, educating my peers and building community and, and learning um, sort of the cornerstone principle that that we uh, in the university, we learn in lots of different ways, not just in the classroom, we learn uh, in the places we live, in the uh, clubs and societies we're a part of as student athletes. Um, and I just became really uh, connected to that um, means of education and I wanted to be an educator. Um, mm. And so I, I moved my way through the field of what we call in the US student affairs. Um, running a hall of residence in my graduate days, my graduate student days, um, becoming a director of residence life, then a, a dean of students, working with student success, working in programs similar to um, access and participation kinds of efforts here. Uh, and I've, I've just been honored um, to get to work with young people uh, and it has helped to keep me young as well. I would say a core or a theme running through each of my roles um, at, at any level that I've worked in uh, has been working to educate students around issues of diversity and social justice and inclusion. Um, I went to university as an undergraduate um, fairly conservative, fairly um, with, with sort of a small world, smaller worldview, despite having moved all over the world at growing up in the military. Um, but when I got to university, there was a different way that I got exposed to people who were different from me. And so part of my educational goal has been to um, to help mentor and teach students about the broader, wider world and the fact that my, my belief that difference is good, doesn't need to be scary. And yeah. so as part of um, building communities in lots of different ways, I, I've tried to build inclusive, uh, diverse communities where everyone can feel a sense of belonging, whether that's in a residence hall, whether that's at a college or a university uh, in whatever role I've had. Yeah, no, that's amazing. I can definitely relate to a lot of what you've just said, um, especially kind of being, uh, coming to university and kind of having your eyes opened. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, and so secondly, um, International Women's Day for 2021 um, focuses on women in leadership. Um, yeah. And the slogan this year is hashtag choose to challenge. Um, so we were just wondering, what does this slogan mean to you personally and professionally? Yeah, I, I tend to think about it in a couple of different ways. Um, for me, there have been lots of challenges along the way as I've um, grown professionally. And I think for me, some of the, some of the ways that I've been most impacted uh, or, or had my eyes opened or learned something new has been through challenge, whether that's been, um, a challenge from a colleague or an organizational challenge that we've faced as a senior leadership team at a college or a university, uh, whether that's been a challenging situation with a student um, or a student and their family. Um, challenge is one of the ways that I, I learn the most. It, it forces me to reflect and to think critically in ways that 
I might not always every day. So for me, challenge is uh, a really powerful educational tool. I think as, as I think about my role as an educator with students, I think that um, challenging and balancing support uh, is a way that I educate. Um, pushing challenging students to uh, consider someone else's viewpoint or to expose themselves to uh, a different cultural background or experience, um, challenging students to um, think about their own behavior in a different way if it's a conduct situation. Um, and then, of course, providing the appropriate level of support to go with that challenge um, is one of the ways that I, I educate students. Um, so I think I, I think for me, it's a teaching tool, whether that's for myself or for someone else. And I, I suppose the third thing that comes to mind is uh, and, and relates to um, our theme today and, and for this year is um, challenges the way we change organizations and systems. And we make um, businesses, institutions, universities, nations, um, better places for women, for other, um, for people from other underrepresented or marginalized backgrounds. We, we don't get very far if we don't challenge. And so uh, it's been interesting to think about that theme and think about it as a catalyst for, for learning and for change and, and for systemic growth. Mm, yeah, no, that's amazing. I couldn't agree more with all of that. Um, so the next question is, so you've recently joined University College as its first female principal. Um, so obviously, University College is one of the oldest and one of the more traditional colleges at, at Durham Uni. Um, so I was wondering what particular opportunities and challenges do you think that this um, has presented you as you started this role? Wow, well, there have been lots of opportunities. Um, I do want to say that I... I I need to honor um, the woman woman who came before me. I, there was a prior woman principal. She was an interim woman principal, um, but it is the case that I'm the first permanently appointed uh, woman principal at University College, and so I, I always want to be real clear about that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's interesting to try to sort through um, – this notion of new leadership at University College in the context of COVID. So much has changed for University College this year um, because of the pandemic and the way that we are connecting as a community. Um, and it's interesting to think about how do I sort of slice out my role there um, because the pandemic has of course been, been so intensive. Um, but I, I think that I have brought um, a different style of leadership, not necessarily better or worse, but just different. I'm quite collaborative. Um, servant leadership is a core of who I am, taking care to, um, to challenge and support the colleagues with whom I work, the students with whom I work, paying attention to their needs and helping them to learn and grow is, is at the core of who I am. Um, and I'm, I'm heavily communicative. I share a lot of information and, um, especially in a time like this, that's, that's really important. Um, I think my style, because I have always wanted to work with students and be very, um, intentional about developing interpersonal connections with students professionally, um, I think there's been, from what students tell me, a little bit of an increased visibility from myself and my role with students. Um, and so that's, I hope, been a positive. It helps me to learn sort of the, the culture better. It helps me to learn the community. It helps me to learn students' needs and wishes better to be connected and to wander around and talk with students and be, be visible and engaged um, the, the entire leadership team at University College has turned over completely. So it's not even just uh, that I'm new. We have a new vice principal, Ellen. Um, we have a new chaplain, Stephanie. We have uh, a new alumni and development manager joining us. Some of the um, other colleagues in the staff, the assistant principal, David Lowther, 
and our college secretary, Paula Furness, um, all of us are within just a couple of years um, of being at University College. Our operations team colleagues uh, with facilities management, um, all of us are, are fairly new. We have a couple of longstanding colleagues uh, on the leadership team who've been there eight or nine years, but the bulk of us have, are new. And um, I think that my leadership style of team building and collaboration is really um, is really well matched with this dramatic shift at University College with this kind of leadership change. And to be perfectly frank, the leadership change has been from a com almost completely male led team mm -hmm. to a very heavily female led team. And so it's going to be interesting over the next couple of years to see what that means, uh, to see how that shapes the university college community. It's only been six months or so since I've been here. So it's a little bit early to tell, but so far I feel like the reception has been really positive. The staff team is tremendous. The student leaders are wonderful and have been really welcoming. Um, and and I, I feel really optimistic about the future. I think it's different for alumni um, who are looking forward to uh, getting reconnected to their college and are curious about who this new leader is. And so I'm trying to be really transparent with alumni as well and share a bit about who I am and what my background is and, and what some of my hopes and dreams and vision are for University College. Uh, as we develop sort of a, a pathway forward together, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that sounds all really great. Um, yeah, it's, these last couple of years have definitely been kind of the years of change. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes, and to be honest, University College has been through a lot over the last few years, from um, the tragic deaths of two students to the tragic death of the principal, um, and and some interim leadership, strong but temporary leadership, lots of staff turnover. It's a really vulnerable time to be a community when you go through those sorts of things for two years, not to mention you layer on top the pandemic. Yeah. And so um, I believe that I was brought in to, um, to help do some healing. And I think that my own style will lend itself fairly well to helping to re rebuild or strengthen the community, strengthen the relationship with our student leaders um, and, and strengthen the relationship with our senior common room and our alumni as well. So um, I'm looking forward to moving ahead together. Uh, and, and I'm, as all of us are looking forward to doing so post pandemic. <laughs> hundred percent. Definitely. Um, so before joining Durham, um, you worked as the Vice President of Student Affairs and Dean of Students at Alverno College, Milwaukee, which you have talked about. Um, so Alverno College is an independent liberal arts focused college um, with a strong female representation across the cohort. Um, so we were wondering what motivated you to make the move to your current role here in the UK? Yeah, that's really interesting. So throughout my career, as I have worked in different capacities, moving my way to more and more senior positions as an educator and an, and an administrator at a college or university, I've been really intentional about exploring the wide array of institution types in higher education. It's a really diverse sector in the U.S. with um, community colleges or FE, furthering education kinds of institutions, public four years, private four years, large research universities, small independent liberal arts colleges, uh, women's colleges, historically black colleges. Um, and I have been purposeful about working in a lot of those types. I worked at a historically black institution. I worked most recently, as you mentioned, at a Catholic women's college, uh, large public, open enrollment. Anyone who wants to come pursue higher education can come to highly selective. You have to score really high on your ACTs and have fantastic grades um, because I wanted to, to really explore and find which institution type fit best for me. Where did I feel like I made the best difference or the most difference? Which student population did I connect with best? Um, and, and in the U S I found that that tended to be with, 
uh, first generation students whose families perhaps didn't attend uh, college or university who might come from um, a lower income background. Um, I, I tended to gravitate to students in need, students from marginalized backgrounds who were looking, clawing, scraping to find sense of belonging in higher education. And I suppose that uh, after six years at Alverno College, it was a wonderful experience. I loved every minute of working in a women's environment. Um, talk about empowering uh, and women lifting each other up. Uh, it, it was phenomenal. And, and I learned quite a bit about working at a religiously affiliated institution. I didn't grow up in a particular faith tradition, but I was leading, uh, I was on the senior leadership team at this Catholic, you know, Catholic college, uh, and had to learn a whole lot about what that meant and to learn about Catholicism and, uh, and our particular charism. And so again, that theme of challenge, I was challenged to explore, uh, all sorts of new things, new ways of being and, and new ways of believing. Um, and so after about six years there, um, I, I started to think maybe, maybe it's time to start considering something else. Um, but I wasn't, I wasn't engaging a really robust search. I was just sort of keeping my eyes open and I saw the post for Durham, um, and the university college, uh, had position come open. And I talked with my partner, Lisa, who um, she and I have always talked about wanting to live overseas and to get to explore other parts of the world. And it just sort of seemed the next best way to explore another sector, uh, another part of the higher education sector. What better thing to do than to go experience higher education in a new country, in a different country? So um, I... I I thought this is a perfect combination for me of being at a large university with infrastructure and resources that are helpful, but leading a smaller college community that's about the right size for me. That 1,500 to 2,000 student size gives me a chance to get to know students as well as to lead the organization. And I, I don't have to be super removed. Uh, I can, I can be right there with students, um, teaching and learning together. And so, um, it just felt like a, a wonderful opportunity. The history and the heritage uh, at Castle is tremendous. Um, and, and we serve a lot of different constituents here, you know, from, from students to alumni to um, guests and patrons, um, Durham community members trying to help them feel even more connected to Durham Castle. It was just an opportunity to try some new things, explore higher education someplace else, and um, and continue my my career as an educator in a in a new way and in a new place. So yeah. I've I've not had any regrets at all. Even even with COVID and the pandemic and even with this year not being like any of us imagined. No, uh, no. It's been wonderful. Yeah. Well, this question kind of leads on from what you just touched on there. Um, so Durham University is um, seeing greater representation of women in senior leadership roles such as yours across the institution, which is obviously a really positive development. Um, so gender specific challenges are still facing women in the workplace, um, as we know. Um, what do you consider to be the greatest opportunity and challenge for women working in higher education? Um, and that kind of based off of your own experiences, are they the same challenges and opportunities in the UK compared with the US? Or would you say there are differences in that? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. I'm, I still have a lot to learn about higher education in the UK, so I'm not sure I could speak um, in, in any great detail to, to my experience here in the UK yet, but I can give some initial insights. I would say that... Um, in higher education, it, it really depends on the discipline, the amount of challenge that a woman faces or women face in um, their career trajectory. I would say in my particular field within higher education, because it's primarily perceived as a support role, the student life, the st wider student experience kind of dimension of higher education, at least in the U.S., tends to be perceived as support. And so it's more common to see women moving to senior positions in the student affairs field. When you make that shift to roles as presidents, 
of course, you see a dramatic drop off of women being represented in the presidential roles. And I think it's the same, at least that I've seen in higher education in the U.S., in academic disciplines. Some disciplines, women do really well and go to the senior most levels. Again, if they're perceived as caring, nurturing, supportive kinds of disciplines, social services, health care, um, those sorts of fields. When you get to, when you start to make the shift into sciences or any STEM fields, you see a much different climate for women in those academic disciplines, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's, you know, it's one of those things with any other social issue. We've, we've made progress, we've made strides, and yet there's still that, um, that glass ceiling, that, that barrier. Um, and I would imagine it's fairly similar here, um, in, in the UK. That's certainly been my initial perception. Um, although I have to say I've been pleasantly surprised to see, um, such lovely representation of women, um, in the principal roles. I believe about half of us are women, uh, it doesn't escape me that all four of our executive deans here at Durham are women, um, which is remarkable. Of course, then you go to the next layer and, and everyone is male, but um, yeah. it, it's, I think we're getting further and further along, but, um, but we're not, we're certainly not to equity uh, or parity yet. Yeah. It's definitely in the right um, direction, but as yeah. I said, yeah, there's more work to be done. Um, so Houston of College, um, the motto is strength and diversity. Um, and we organize lots of events to promote intercultural exchange, um, especially through the Global Citizen Programme. Um, so given the recent COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of this activity has unfortunately been on uh, remotely. Um, would, what do you see um, as being the advantages and disadvantages of this um, kind of new approach to being online? And do you think it will impact the future of higher education as we move beyond the pandemic? Yeah, that's really um, powerful. I think a lot of us are reflecting about that right now. Ustinov's mm-hmm. motto is wonderful. I think the work that you all do around issues of, of diversity and social justice um, from both a, a caring, supportive angle and an academic angle uh, it is remarkable. And, and I hope in time to be able to, to lead University College into, um, into that sphere with you all. We want to be one of the leading colleges in this, in this space around diversity and social justice and inclusion. Um, I think a, a colleague of mine at a, at a workshop we were in this week said, um, and I thought this was really powerful. We don't, he doesn't want to think about um, the, our professional life post COVID as a new normal, but as moving to a better place. And I think um, Simon was right on when he said that. I, I think we will limit ourselves and we won't respond to the challenge in as, um, in as widespread a manner if we simply um, either shift back to everything the way we did it or or just add some telework, teleconferencing to the work that we do. I think um, we need to continue to challenge ourselves and our communities and our disciplines to find the best ways to appropriately integrate the virtual community building opportunities that we've had, the virtual teaching and learning strategies that we've developed, um, and blend them with the human and interpersonal interaction that we were used to. Um, I, I don't think it needs to be an either or. I think there's got to be a way to weave the best of of both ways of being, of both ways of educating and building community to to weave those things together. But it's clear we're not going to be um, unscathed from this. It's clear that that we are transformed, um, and and I'm excited actually to see how how we might move forward. We've been able to, just one small example, connect with alumni, um, Castle alumni who have never been able to kind of come back to Durham since they left or come to a reunion. Um, and, and at this last reunion, we had 
you know, a hundred people, many of whom had never engaged previously, um, including many of our women alumni who, as you may know, University College has only uh, had women students since 1987. And so we don't have very many women in our alumni community far enough back that they've stepped into leadership roles. But I think I think this is one of the values, one of the benefits of being able to do some things online and bring some people into community that have wanted to but didn't weren't able to physically for one reason or another. And so I think um, holding on to some of the positives and some of the the beauty of the impact of COVID will be really, really important. I think about women in the workplace and um, women with caring responsibilities and how we've, we've changed institutional culture, um, business culture to see that remote working is actually productive and can be helpful. And so if we completely throw out that option for women, people in the workplace that have caring responsibilities, if we, if we get rid of it and go back to a solely on-site work model, then I think we're missing out on an opportunity to learn from uh, and integrate what we've learned from this experience. So I, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't have a sense of exactly how we will evolve, but, but I think there are some wonderful opportunities and ways to integrate the best of, of pre-COVID and post-COVID in the educational world. Mm, definitely. It's great to see like the positives of this situation. Yeah. And take those forward. Um, yeah. And then just the final question then, um, and this is more broad, if you could give your younger self um, any advice for when you were 21 and um, what, knowing what you know now, what advice would that be? Hmm. It's funny. Somebody else asked me that question recently. I, I think I would, um, I would tell myself to take more risks mm. and um, push myself and to be braver. Um, yeah. I, I, as a young person, prided myself on having grown up in the U.S. military, moved around the world, um, been exposed to lots of different cultures and communities and people. And, and that was all wonderful. But I think I, um, let myself sit too comfortably in that exposure to difference. And I didn't, it wasn't until university that I really made meaning of those experiences and was able to integrate them into my own identity. Um, and, and I wish that I had pushed myself and been braver as a younger person to make meaning of that earlier. Um, and, and I, I, I wish that I had um, sort of had more uh, confidence and courage earlier. It took me a long time to develop um personal and professional confidence and, and courage. And, um, and I, I think there, there are days in the past that I, I wish that it hadn't taken quite so long. So, so telling myself to be a little braver, take a few more risks uh, earlier in my life. Uh, I would, I would like to have done that. Mm, that's something that I can definitely resonate with, especially being like a young female, I think. And the idea of like courage and, um, you know, taking more risks is definitely something we could all kind of learn from. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so that concludes the end of um, this interview. And thank you so much for joining us today um, and providing us with such insightful and engaging responses. Um, it's been a real pleasure for me to speak with you today. Thanks, Arabella. It's been great to talk with you, too.